Good evening. I'm Mayor Sandra James, and I would like to welcome you this evening on behalf of the City Council. This is a very special evening for us. Um, we hope to make it a very special evening for you. This is an evening that the City presents the Crest Awards, which stands for Cupertino Recognizes Extra Steps Taken. And I'll tell you what that's all about. It's really our opportunity to recognize those people that volunteer their time in our city. And I've talked this year a lot about partnerships as the mayor, that that's, um, that's one of the things that I, make, I think makes this city very unique, that the educational uh, community, municipal government, our businesses, our social service agencies, and our citizens all work very closely together to do the things that make Cupertino a very special place to live. And this is an evening when we are able to recognize some of the people in our community, because there are many of them, who volunteer much of their time to make this city very special and to do some of the things that we cannot do, we being uh, government and or being the schools or social service agencies, that we cannot do on our own. And so, um, as one of the recipients, Mr. McKay, just said to me, Sandy, there's nothing special about me. I just do what a lot of other people do. Well, I suppose you do do what a lot of other people do, all of you, but you are mentors and role models and examples for the rest of the community of how you have enriched your own lives by becoming active in the community and therefore enriched others. And so we are here this evening to honor you and to um, award you an award from our city. The process tonight because we are being taped and we will be on uh, cable uh, TV many times during the year, we want to make sure that you are seen or heard. So the process will be that, that uh, my fellow council member, Michael Chang, who I will uh, introduce in a moment or two, and I will be presenting the awards. We will name the recipient and ask you to remain seated while we show a video clip of all your accomplishments so that you can watch that. And then I'll ask you to come forward and stand here next to me and I will give you your award. And also Supervisor Liz Ness has uh, a proclamation in your honor that goes with your award. So we are going to start this evening with our first recipient, which is Diana Ar Ar Argabright. And if the video can go, please. <laughs> I love the exciting tour you gave us. This visit inspired me very much. I love art and I learned that art takes a lot of thinking and a lot of time. You have inspired me to maybe become an artist someday. Artist Diana Argabright finds her own inspiration in the children she teaches. I love teaching tours. I really do. I, I really do like everyone. I, I particularly do love children though, I must say because children are very alive, very fresh, um, very honest, um, and it's exciting to work with children. For the past 12 years, Diana has served as director of the Arts and Schools program at the Euphrat Museum of Art on the De Anza College campus. Her position is part-time, but the hours she puts in add up to much more. Besides leading teaching tours of the museum, Diana runs after school and summer arts programs that involve 22,000 student hours. She organizes community events, public art projects, mentors teachers, and helps curate Euphrat exhibits. So I might be um, on the phone making sure I've got, you know, 30-some people set up for family day, designing the booths you know, the hands-on activities, talking to the different performing groups, making sure that they have what they need, you know, to come here and perform. Um, hiring people ahead for our giant summer program. So it might be interviewing potential artists for positions, teachers, um, choosing, choosing children's artwork for exhibitions, um, on and on and on. Why does she put so much of her own time and energy into the job? Because I really, really, really believe in the program because it's, it's really quality stuff. Diana also believes in the positive influence that art can have on children. Well, art to me is, is way more than just creating um, a decorative picture. Art is a way of uh, understanding our own souls in a sense, a way of communicating um, values. So when you teach kids creative thinking, which is what art does, it lends itself to every other subject 
And it doesn't matter what they're going to be when they grow up. If they've learned to be confident in the fact that they were born with this wonderful brain and this wonderful heart, uh, they, can, they can go anywhere in their life and have confidence in themselves. Her passion for art extends beyond the Euphrat to the San Jose Police Department's Gang Prevention Task Force, where she volunteers as a kind of big sister to girls at risk. A lot of times these kids have very challenging home situations or life situations. Of course with me, I'm, bringing, I'm doing a lot of art, bringing art into their lives and as a tool for um, feeling good about themselves and, and thinking positively about their futures. Diana's belief in the power of art has touched and will continue to touch countless young people in our community. I had lots of fun at the art class and I forgot about everything else because my mind was full of art. Diana, would you please come up? Beautiful Crest Award, and this is your certificate from Supervisor Liz Ness. I want you to know that um, I have uh, worked with Diana and seen her work for many, many, many years. On the school board, she has been in all of the schools in the school district, all 24 of them. And what, what you maybe didn't hear is that she not only works with the children, but she gives a lot of her time and her own supplies and her own artwork to the teachers to help teachers learn how to use art in the classroom and across curriculums. And one of the things I admire the most about Diana is that she is a perfect example of how art and the arts in general reach across cultures, across ages, uh, across uh, dialects and energies because it comes right directly to your heart and to your soul and I think therefore she has really spread herself amongst this community and amongst generations and generations of people and on behalf of the citizens of Cupertino I thank you very much and we honor you tonight. Thank you. Congratulations. Speaking of honor, I am very honored to introduce to you a fellow council person that I have worked with, not only on the city council, but on the Cupertino School Board. So Michael and I go back a long way, and I know that he um, believes very strongly in community activism as well as in education issues. Um, he is a teacher at De Anza College, a former mayor, and my colleague on the city council. Please uh, welcome Dr. Michael Chang. Thanks so much, Sandy. This is, uh, we do a lot of things on council, but uh, this has to be one of the most enjoyable and fun things that us council members have to do each year. And I think this must be my, uh, I, I lose count after a few. This must be the sixth time that we're up here doing this, but each year is so enjoyable. And it's a real honor that I have uh, free uh, persons and groups that I will be giving awards to. The first is a group, uh, it's called Faith in Action. So I think we're going to watch a video of it first. A warm meal and a place to sleep at night. Often the most basic needs are out of reach for the homeless. But Faith in Action, a group of religious and community organizations in the area, sees to those simple needs and in the process provides a whole lot more. This program uh, is a one-on-one -on -one case managed program. It's very small. We only house 15 guys at a time, um, but we're able to actually resource them with all kinds of things uh, from the community and from Cupertino Community Services who administer our program. Um, and then, of course, the one-on-one -on -one case management is you know, key, I think, to the success of our guests. Last year, the Faith in Action Project took in a total of 94 homeless men who were referred by CCS. To be recommended for the program, the men must be able and willing to work. They must also sign a contract agreeing to remain clean and sober, attend support meetings, and meet regularly with a case manager to track the progress in their search for employment. While pursuing their plan to find work, the men need to be housed and fed, and this is where community volunteers come in. 
We have 12 host churches and we have about six or eight other churches who are helping churches who provide dinners and donations to the program um, and just support for the program. The 12 host churches host once a month and each month um, the shelter moves to a different church so that no one church you know, bears the burden of the, of the housing the whole time. Also last year, volunteers provided more than 16,000 individual home-cooked meals for guests in the rotating shelter. You know, we have the best cooks in town, and these people love to cook for these guys because they're so appreciative. And so a lot of our volunteers are cooks. Um, but the volunteers who come and visit just like to hang out with these guys. They're great company. Um, you know, they're very interesting. You will meet every type of person that you could imagine. Kathy says one of the most rewarding aspects of the 10-year-old FIA program is seeing the graduates come back as shelter volunteers. All of our overnight supervisors right now are graduates of our program and they are very dedicated and I think that that, you know, that they want to give back and they, they feel like it's, you know, that this is a program that's changed their lives and they want to be there to, you know, help somebody else out. You know, I can't even describe, you know, some of the stories that we hear and just, you know, how great it is and how, how much it's changed people's lives. And, you know, we always think that if you had changed one person's life, that's great. But, you know, in the past 10 years, I, you know, would hazard to guess how many lives we've changed. This is a really special group, Faith in Action. I think what they do to me is something that's so important in our community. They reach out, they uh, put people together. It's a collaborative effort. They uh, cook meals, and uh, while it's probably easy enough to buy meals, and it's certainly uh, much easier to serve it that way, I think the kind of um, uh, humanity and the kind of uh, love that they uh, share by cooking those meals and working on this uh, project on a consistent basis through such a long time speaks volume of all the volunteers and especially also on the board that has really supported this project. So it's a real pleasure to uh, give our Crest Award to Faith in Action. Would a representative please come up? On behalf of the city of Cupertino, I would like to thank you and to present to you our 2001 Crest Award. Mm -hmm. And here's also a supervisor's uh, supervisor business commendation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Continuing in the special work that our citizens do for our city, I have the great pleasure of uh, honoring Peggy Hamilton, and uh, we'll first see a clip about this very, very special lady whom I just met just now. At 88 years old, Peggy Hamilton may have given up her dancing shoes, but she keeps a tight hold on her love of life. I used to dance on Tuesday night with the blind veterans, but now I can't, kind of my legs, I don't do it anymore, but I used to dance with them. And some of those blind dancers are better dancers than I am. They really can dance, they love the music. Peggy's philosophy for enjoying life and staying positive is a simple one. Keep busy. I recommend keep busy. For more than 30 years, she's been putting that suggestion into practice through volunteer work. Hers has been a familiar face at every book sale the Friends of the Library has sponsored for the past two decades. I help put out the books, and then on the, at the sale, I'm a cashier. And on Saturday, we work from uh, 9 to 3 to 4, and I generally bring egg salad sandwiches for Lois and me and a couple of extras in case someone wants a sandwich. On Sunday, I work from 12 to 3. And I stay all times. I just stop on Saturday just to eat a sandwich. 
That's what I do. And as a long-standing member of the Federated Women's Club, she's well known as the one who never forgets a holiday or birthday. Every holiday, I send mail-out cards. Easter, Valentine, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you name it. Their birthdays and anniversaries. A widow herself, Peggy last year sent at least 100 Valentines to others who had lost their loved ones. When I go to my luncheons, everybody thanks me for the, the cards because they say I'm the only one that they can depend on getting some kind of a card instead of a bill. And I really, I think it's, I enjoy it more so than they do. I really think that. So uh, I buy my cards from one year to the other in case I'm too sick to go to the store or someone to take me to the store to buy them. So I'm always a year ahead. Reach out and touch. It's what Peggy does, and it's what she lives for. I just want people to keep busy, because that keeps you young. And I'm going to reach 100. I'll be 88 this year, but I'm going to reach 100. It's because I'm around nice people, and I keep in touch with everybody. Peggy Hamilton is with us. Peggy, would you please come on up? Take your time. Um, I was just thinking, when I met uh, Peggy, I think that she's inspirational for us all for a number of reasons. Uh, inspires us to live to 88 and to look on to 100. Um, to also look so good. <laughs> it's true, you know. So youthful, so energetic. She, uh, has anybody collected, ever collected money for a cause? You know how chaotic it is, you know. And to do the collection for the library and the book sale each year and to handle that, that's a really big job. So um, really thank you so much, Peggy, for for, for, doing, for doing all the work that you do and for enjoying it all. I have a feeling that uh, Peggy is pro possibly the most mature person that we've ever given the award to, probably. I we think so. <laughs> great seeing you. On, on behalf of the city, it's a great pleasure to present to you this 2001 Crest Award, Peggy and also a commendation from Supervisor Ness. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Um, the next person that I have is uh, Joe Harper. And I think that uh, a word that uh, describes Joe Harper to me is that she's a super volunteer. So let's watch some video. There's not a lot of foot traffic in Joe Harper's Cupertino home. Not too much because I'm uh, usually gone. <laughs> I don't spend much time at home. This active community volunteer put in more than 500 hours last year for De Anza College's Flint Center where she's been performing as an outstanding volunteer for the past 20 years. But that's only one of many ways she chooses to make herself useful in the community. Joe's also been a volunteer for the Cupertino Senior Center for 15 years and for the De Anza History Center for 10 years. I do whatever they have for me to do. I just like it. it I don't need the money and, uh, you know, if I worked regularly, but still, I feel like I'm doing something that I like and it's worthwhile. Joe often takes her volunteer show on the road, helping out the Allied Arts program in Menlo Park and working as an usher at the Mountain View Center for the Performing Arts. She also worked for several years at the Village House in Las Gatas, a little restaurant that benefited the Ming Kwong Children's Society. Wherever she finds herself, though, people see her as the helpful, warm, and friendly person she is the person with a heart as big as her native state of Texas. Oh, a lot of people recognize me at the desk, and that's, it's good to have friends. I just do what I like to do. 
you know, I don't feel like I really deserve a lot of recognition. Jo says when her husband Harold died after 38 years of marriage, she began her volunteer efforts in earnest and joined a widow and widower support group. Well, I'm busy, keeping busy, that helps. <laughs> I'm usually volunteer. Oh, I play golf in the mornings a lot of times. And I play bridge and bow for the widow widowers. That's fun. Of the places she goes and the job she does, Jo has a special place in her heart for the musical program staged at the Flint Center. The symphonies mainly, the uh, San Jose and also the San Francisco and the Peninsula and the Youth Symphony too. Flint Center Administrator Andrea Horvath says Joe always makes a special effort to ensure that visitors have a rewarding and pleasant experience and her rapport with patrons over the years has earned Joe a special place in the Flint Center family. Well, I don't know that I've done anything, <laughs> really. I just I do whatever is necessary, you know, and whatever she tells me. Her unassuming manner and her willingness to take on whatever needs to be done make Joe Harper a well-loved and much appreciated volunteer. And she can certainly be a role model for anyone thinking about spending time as a volunteer. Well, find something that you like to do. That's the main thing. And I don't know, usually make time for things we want, <laughs> you know. But, uh, it's fun. Cupertino is a good place to live. Uh, Joe, would you please come up for your award? Joe Harper. Um, let's see, 20 years at the Flint Center, um, uh, 15 years Cupertino Senior Center, 10 years volunteering at the De Anza History Center, uh, let's see, eight years uh, in, for the Village House in Los Altos, uh, Los Gatos, oh, it's, it's a typo here, <laughs> Allied Arts in Menlo Park for 10 years, Mountain View, uh, Center for the Performing Arts for five years, and she says she hasn't done much. <laughs> um, Joe, you're a real inspiration for us all. I think it's something that we should all learn from you, to be so giving to the community, to be willing to volunteer, and to do it with such cheerfulness. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to present to you our 2001 Crest Award and a commendation from Supervisor Nitz. Thank you. Thank you. I have the pleasure of reintroducing our mayor, Sandra James. We, did, we were on school board today, together and we're having a lot of fun on city council together too. Our next recipient is Ken McKay. Theatrical stars aren't always found on stage, as Ken McKay has shown. A volunteer at De Anza College's Flint Center for 15 years, he's a star behind the scenes. Um, well, I'll do anything there. Uh, but generally, it's, it's usher duties. Uh, it could be taking tickets, uh, uh, directing people, telling them where the bathrooms are, the telephones. Uh, could be seating them or, you know, just trying to get people in the proper seats. Last year, Ken donated more than 500 hours of volunteer work to the Flint Center. And friends say he can handle just about any situation there, from setting up tables to directing emergency personnel to calming down a disgruntled patron. There are some unpleasant times, but, you know, there are in life anyway, and uh, you just move through it. I think that every time I, I usher, something comes up that, uh, that makes me glad that I went over there. 
Ken's knack for getting along with people and making friends is also evident at Cupertino Community Services, another organization that has benefited from his volunteerism. What I generally do is I'm a gleaner, which means that I pick up food from a designated market or store and bring it in and I'm, I'm really just part of a, a wheel and I'm just a spoke in that wheel. It's the kind of work that I like to do. I like uh, interaction with people. Uh, I like to make new friends. I like to see new people. Um, I like new challenges. Uh, the whole scene is, is really, I think, really neat. The rewards of volunteering, he says, are twofold. Well, sometimes if you're, um, if you're gleaning or bringing in food or whatever your duties are in, in doing that, you know, just the eye contact with these people and just bringing something new and bright into their lives, it does it into your life too. It, re it really does. Ken encourages anyone thinking about community volunteerism. There's a big world out here and uh, there's a lot of people that, can, that need help. Uh, there's a lot of agencies that uh, don't have money for the kind of help or expertise that these people can give, even if it's just grunt work. Uh, there's just a lot of fun in, in working with people like that and doing that kind of work. Come on up, Ken. Don't be shy. I've never known you to be shy. You know, we are very fortunate to have a facility like Flint Center in the middle of our city, and Paula Davis, who's here this evening, does an outstanding job of managing it. In addition to that, she is very active in the community and all the other areas, in CCS, on the Chamber Board, and that is why people like Ken are so willing and so comfortable working in those facilities and volunteering their time, and it's one of the things, I think, that makes this city very, very special. I run into Ken when I'm over at Flint Center and he's all dressed up and looking spiffy, you know, and seating people and helping people to be comfortable in a, in a, a wonderful, beautiful atmosphere. And he helps those that are less fortunate there that maybe can't get around as well or have some problems. And then I have run into him often at CCS with his baskets full of food and helping people that are just having a really difficult time in life right now. And we do have those people in the middle of our city. And I think his nature, his humbleness, and his honesty, and his ability to reach people across all different situations in their life is what makes him so special and such an important part of our community. So on behalf of all of our citizens, I thank you very, very much, and I'm honored to present this Crest Award to you this evening. And, um, and this is from our supervisor, Liz Ness. Thank you very much. Can I have And our next recipient is Sandy Zander. I really, really think it's important for people to understand that when you make a difference to one person, you make a difference. And volunteer work does not have to mean raising $100,000 at an event. It can mean just giving a few hours a week to make somebody's life a little bit happier. Sandy Zander's volunteer work covers both ends of the spectrum. She's been a major fundraiser for the Cupertino Educational Endowment Fund, CEF, for the past seven years. And she's been a friend to those in need for as long as anyone can remember. CEF is the fundraising arm for the Cupertino Union School District. The group is close to Sandy's heart because as a former teacher, she says it directly benefits Cupertino students by making various programs available in the schools. This year, all of the money is going towards arts programs and technology. 
the big push in the schools, obviously, for the past number of years has been keeping up with technology, and it's going to be a constant, ongoing expense because you're never up to date. The other thing that CIF has always been very, very proud of is we don't just buy the equipment and drop it off at the schools and say, here it is, this is our gift to you. Uh, teacher training has always been a huge component of what we donate to, to the schools. And we probably spend just as much on making sure the equipment is used and used properly. That way everybody benefits from it. CIF sponsors two big fundraisers every year, a spring golf tournament and a fall gala. Sandy has poured countless volunteer hours into both of these events, tapping into her considerable decorating skills and her amazing store of energy and enthusiasm. Last year, her efforts and those of other volunteers netted $165,000, which CIF made available to local schools. I've gotten to meet a lot of really nice people. I've gotten to meet a lot of really committed people. And I've gotten to be involved in groups that I think are doing important things. Sandy's involvement in CIF activities is more than behind the scenes and has made believers of her whole family, which includes husband Andy and three children. I was working at the auction. There's 700 people and I'm all the way over on one side of the room and the bidding starts and it's $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, $2,100, and I'm thinking to myself, are these people nuts? They're paying for a dog. And it finally goes to $2,400. The dog is sold. And I look over and there is my husband signing the credit card slip. So we came home with the most expensive dog in Cupertino. For many years, Sandy has been a familiar face on PTA boards, at one point serving on elementary, junior high, and high school boards all at once. If that's not enough, Sandy also does volunteer work through her synagogue, primarily focusing on Jewish education programs. Also through the synagogue, Sandy has met people who have needed a helping hand, a stroke victim who needed rides to his doctor appointments, and a woman with a rare disease who wanted some company once in a while. For these people and for others, Sandy has been there. Whenever I try to get volunteers for something and people say, I don't have time to do it, I say, okay, well, let me give you some choices of things that you can do that take very little time. Send in a case of soda and make 20 phone calls for me. That, that, who can say no to that? So everybody has time to do a little something. up Sandy. Um, I've known Sandy forever I think. We uh, raised our kids together. Her daughter and my son went to school together so we've shared the tears and the joys and the passions of motherhood. And I think everywhere I go in the city, I run into her. We have worked on so many things together. She's the perfect example to me of someone who blends all the different avenues of her life. I have so much respect for the fact that she practices her faith in everything she does, that she is really a mirror for all of us of how you can pull it all together and share it with the rest of the world in a very positive way. She has been instrumental in doing all kinds of things for our educational community, sharing her, her professional expertise. She has her own business, had her own business, and, and has helped all of our schools learn how to make these wonderful baskets which have now become very competitive in the auction, at the SEAF auction, they're gorgeous. And uh, what I like the most, or admire the most about Sandy is something she said, and that she touches people in very special ways. And she's very aware that just touching one person doesn't stop there, that it goes on and on and on and on and on. So thank you very, very thank much you. for all that you do and all that you give to us yes. on behalf of everyone in the city. Thank you. So, and 
And now we have a, a brief clip of all of our recipients. Here once again are the 2001 Crest Award winners. Sandy Zander. I think there are hundreds and thousands of people who do the kind of things that I do. I know hundreds of them. And um, keep that part in the tape. <laughs> um, and I don't feel like I should really be singled out for it, although it's very nice of, of the committee to honor me with this. Ken McKay. Now I have time to do a lot of things. I can uh, volunteer during the daytime, and I'm not, uh, I'm not tied or tethered to a job. I have no regular hours. Uh, there are things that I like to do, and there's days that uh, get priority for doing them. Joe Harper. My husband did a lot of traveling, and uh, I needed something to do. <laughs> but the children all grown, you know. Then after he died, I had it. I have more time now to devote to volunteering. I just like it. Peggy Hamilton. I think I get more out of it than anybody else. It keeps me going. I really think it does keep me going. Uh, if I didn't have that, I'd be sitting home doing nothing. And since I can't work in the yard, uh, I like to keep busy, and they do make me happy. Faith in action. I've never met so many fine people, and I haven't been fed this great since I used to live at home. So I want to thank you very much, and uh, very sincerely from the bottom of my heart, this has been wonderful. So God bless you people, and we're, we're not all just homeless and bums off the street. You know, we're out there, we're working people and stuff, so I just want to let you know this is an interim thing, and and hopefully someday I'll be able to come back and give back to uh, at least one of these churches that have helped me. And Diana Argabright. I know for myself that I strongly believe that we're put on this earth to um, give what we're able to give and to, to serve, in a sense, through whatever channels it is that we are best at. Thank you for your outstanding volunteer efforts. These are the faces of our city, of your city. And I think if there are some messages here, there are multiple messages. One is, of course, that um, nobody needs to be lonely in this city. We all need you. There are many things to do. There are interesting, exciting things to do. And by helping and volunteering and getting involved, your life will be enhanced as well as the people who you are working with and the people whose lives you touch. So there's no reason to be sitting behind closed doors somewhere feeling that you don't have friends or that you're not needed because you are needed and you're wanted and you will be welcomed if you just reach out and ask. Um, these people that we honored tonight, I think, are a wonderful, wonderful example, as I said at the beginning, of what makes our city very special. They're people that are doing the things they do for the right reasons, because they care, because they want to share who they are, and because they want to make the life and the world around them a better place to be. And because of them, we are because of that, we are honoring them tonight and their families who are here, by the way, and congratulating them. We're going to have a reception right after this. Um, please, everybody, join us for that um, in the foyer. And I want to thank um, the video crew. We have a very talented video crew that does this. Pete and Ray and Lisa. And Rick Kitson, who is in charge. And I am always just so pleased and proud of the work that they do. So thank you. Again, congratulations. Please help me congratulate our 2001 Crest Award winners. Thank you.